first tell me the screening questions what you will ask we have to ask them three questions first mm. of all we have to ask them for pain second thing we have to ask them about the uh, can he uh, stand clean the stairs and third thing can he undress address mm. okay pain you will ask particularly for the pain in the muscles and the joints okay yeah do you have any pain in the muscles and the joints this is very important then you will ask is uh, is does he can he climb upstairs and downstairs without any problem can he dress and undress including the buttoning and unbuttoning okay so after uh, these three questions you will start with uh, p gals as the names to suggest uh, g for gait a for arms l for legs and s for spine and p is for pediatric so pediatric gait uh, arms legs and spine and this is a screening examination for the um, joints to know or to it will help you to locate if there is no obvious swelling there is no obvious swelling in any part of the joint then this screening examination will help you to locate where is the pain so that you can do the regional examination after that okay this is the thing uh, then we will quickly go now because these exams if we don't see visually then it is difficult to do okay just one minute now first we will start with the gait okay so for the gait what what you will do after the screening questions if this is msk examination so this is for the gait it's just one minute mm, one minute 11 seconds I would like you now to walk into the corner turn around and come back in your own time okay with the child undressed it is possible to screen gait effectively by watching the child walk across the room and back look out for any suggestion of limping look at the rhythm of gait look for difficulty in turning around and ask the child about any discomfort look for an expression of pain as the child walks check for the normal pattern of heel strike stance phase and then towing off as the child walks you can also look for evidence of flat feet and excessive pronation when walking, and this is a feature of hypermobility. Now this time, you're going to walk on your, on your heels into the corner and turn around. Then ask the child to walk on their heels and then on their tiptoes. Come back and take a, take a step, step there for a moment. You come back now on your tiptoes. Does that hurt anywhere doing that? Well done. That's great. Thank you. Just relax now. Okay. So that's all. So get you will do. We will do one. Uh, uh, walking. We will we will watch for any deformities, and uh, then uh, also uh, while walking, we can also look for the pest cavus, pest planus, or anything, and also you will ask him to walk two two things here. Uh, knee oh sorry two things that is the toe walking and heel walking tiptoe walking and heel walking okay then after uh, gait you if we start from the lower we will go for the spine okay after gait let's go for the spine so in the spine what what we will do Thompson, stand up for me now, please. Just swing your legs around. So for stand. the spine, we will ask him to stand up. Face the window, please. You will have already observed the child from the side and from behind as part of your general assessment. I want you now to bend forward and touch your toes. It is important to assess forward flexion and look for a smooth curve of the spine from the side and from the back. Okay. Okay, here it is very important. Uh, you have to see the child from the side as well as from the back and feel the smooth curve of the back and look from the back and the side both. Become. This is for the end. We're all finished. Put your clothes on. PGALS is a quick okay. screening examination of the musculoskeletal system and applicable to the school-aged child. Okay.
okay this is for the spine and next we will go for the legs and then we can go for the arms arms is little more it's uh, you have to know more about arms Come on, so let's lie yourself back on the couch now. Okay. Get on the pillow, just lie nice and straight. You need to scan the legs from the top down to the feet. So make sure you can expose the legs appropriately. Just relax, I'm just going to draw your shorts a little bit. Check for muscle bulk and wasting, leg alignment problems such as knock knee or bow leg deformity. Ask yourself, do the legs look the same length? Does there appear to be a flexion contracture at the knee? Look for swelling of the knees. Check the feet, including the soles of the feet, for local causes of a limp, such as veruca or a foreign body. And always scan the nails and the skin for features of psoriasis. Check the knees for warmth, comparing one side with the other. Feel your knees now, so anything hurts, you let me know. When assessing for an effusion, okay. ask about discomfort and scan for facial expression. Gently press down over the distal thigh to move fluid into the joint from the suprapatellar pouch. Compare each side. A patellar tap suggests an effusion, but for a small effusion, a patellar tap may be absent. It may be helpful to milk fluid from one side to the other. Again, compare one side with the other. Can you now just lift this leg up? So bend your bend your knee and try and get your heel up as far as your bottom. Normally, a child of school age is able to reach their heel to their buttock. Thank you. Okay, this is for the legs. But I have one question. In the pigals, nowhere in the legs they have mentioned about ankles. So there's no ankle examination, right? Even well, uh, I don't know, but there they are saying you have to perform uh, include ankles also in pigals. Where? I don't know because it's the legs are coming, L for legs. So leg ankles are the part of the legs. I don't know really. Let is let me go back and check the, about the that arthritis ORG later. Later I will mention. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We will confirm later on. No problem. Okay, but most of the things she is giving is a good for us for the examination. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing she is just doing active movements. Yeah, you can also ask first to do passive movements, then you can add up, no problem. That also can be done. Yeah, yeah, because in this way, we can assess the limitation of movement and also any tenderness and anything, because when the patient is moving, we can get some uh, few, uh, clues that wherever is the problem. So. Yeah, active movement is good because if he's able to move completely, it will give you a clue that his joint is normal. But I if there is any pathology, any joint, he will cry while performing the active movements. Yeah, that's why you will ask a question first. If there is pain, you will be careful about it. And also to, uh, you will ask, like you will ask him to do the active movement. He stopped at some one point of time. You will tell him that, can I do it further? You will take the permission first. Can I try to see that further it can move or not? If they say, no, it's too much pain, you will you will not do. If they allow you, you can do further to see if you can do extend passively little more. Okay. So this is for the arms and then we can start our cases.
Right, OK, you want to come have a seat on the couch? It is often best to sit the child on the examination couch facing you. Start with the hands and take a few moments to scan the hands and up the arms for any evidence of rashes such as psoriasis, not forgetting to check the nails as well, and look for any evidence of joint swelling, deformity and the muscle bulk again. Looking for asymmetry can be helpful. Again. Ask about any pain anywhere, and as you go through your examination, check for facial expression of discomfort. And you let me know if it hurts, okay? It is often easier if the child is able to copy your movements, so standing in front of them allows you to demonstrate the various manoeuvres. Tom, I'd like to put your hands if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So put your hands out in front of you like that. That's great. And then turn your hands right over. Ask them to turn their hands over as far as they can go. Check again for asymmetry, as lack of full supination may indicate joint disease at the wrist or elbow or a combination of the two. And make a nice tight fist. A full finger tuck is an excellent screen for the small joints of the fingers and hands. You put your finger and thumb together like me, like that. Check manual dexterity and small joint movement. Turn the hands back over and gently squeeze the metacarpophalangeal joints. Well done. Then ask the child to put their hands together. First of all, with their hands palm to palm, with the elbows held horizontal. Then ask the child to put the back of the hands together again, with the elbows kept horizontal. Check for symmetry of movement. This is a good way to screen for wrist extension and flexion, finger extension and elbow flexion. That's comfortable. Well done. Okay, and now put your hands Then up. ask them to raise their arms straight above the head. This screens the shoulder and elbows for extension. Asking them to look at the ceiling screens neck extension. Ask them to put their hands behind their head and elbows right back, and this screens the shoulders and the elbows. Relax and then head to one side, ear on shoulder. Check for lateral flexion of the cervical spine. Excellent. Observing the child from the front may show some asymmetry of the face. You can take your three middle fingers. Ask them to open their mouth. Check for asymmetry of movement, which may suggest temporomandibular joint disease. A child should be able to insert easily three of their own fingers okay. into their mouths. Relax. In the normal child, all these manoeuvres are very easy. You may see clues for hypermobility with excessive ranges of movement, and this is very common in children. Always check for asymmetry of range of movement, which may help localise joint disease. Okay. <laughs> So you the first case or I will give you 